everybody it is Friday again which means another video from the journal in a box collaboration between Kristen and I so today's video is showing the process of the two finished pages that I sent to Kristen so for this page I am doing you saw the technique in the last video that I posted but I had used Distress Oxide ink and sprays. This is the technique that I was talking about from Lavina Stamps where she applied, she used Colorbox pigment ink but I didn't have any in a color that I wanted so I'm I just chose a pigment ink and I had this one by Studio G and I got that at Michael's like ages ago for like probably a dollar fifty or something like that so I am putting on some gray pigment ink and you see I just knocked my tray that I had the brush out in so my yellow is no longer just pure yellow it got some blue knocked in there but I wasn't worried about it I just went ahead as planned so the whole process is you already mix your brush out instead of putting dry brush out on your gel plate and I like this so much better and then using a fan brush I haven't tried it with a different brush she used a fan brush and I had one on hand so I used what she used and I really do like this technique And I haven't played with it since I did the I did these pages. And I really like it. So I need to play with that idea some more. I wanted a bit more blue, so instead of doing the whole process again, I just splattered some on with my brush. I think it looks really cool. So the colors of brush out that I used, I used turquoise, lemon, and leaf green. Oh yeah, and I forgot that first page that I just did, that was me practicing it because I didn't want to do it directly on the page in my book, or not my book, but what I was sending to Kristen. I had never done it before, so I wanted to give it a try before committing to doing it for Kristen. So I'm just doing the same technique again. I'm going in with what is supposed to be the lemon, <laughs> but is now lemon mixed with the turquoise and the leaf green. And then just the leaf green. And then the turquoise, that doesn't look like turquoise at all. But it still turned out nice. And it was a bit like the gel plate is bigger than what my page is, so I'll, I should have not done it out so far, but it still looks cool. So I didn't want to waste what paint was left on my gel plate, so I'm taking that first piece of paper that I was playing with and just adding that extra color to that plate. So I kind of wanted to see also what it would look like once the first layers were dry and then if you went in and did it again. So I'm just taking my Pigma Micron pen and I like to just loosely draw two lines in the border and making sure that they overlap and like cross over at times. And then I just do the you know black, white, black, white. And I love doing this border. I 
find it such a simple thing to do and I love the overall look of it. I don't know if you can hear it or not, but my cat is meowing. He wants in the room with me. And it's not happening because he will get in here and he will get into everything. So I'm just taking an image from Mischief Circus and just going to glue it down and then add a quote to the page. So this one, it was like, I think it looks great and it was really easy to do. It was super quick and easy. Got a little bit of glue on the page and the more I rubbed it, the worse it got. So I'm taking an eraser and I'm erasing it and it did it did remove it. So you can see there are pencil lines already on the page because I've already sketched out where I want my words to lie. And then I just go in with my Pigma Micron pen and trace the words. Sometimes I find once I'm going over it with the pen I may change the lettering a little bit. And you just saw me switch pens. That's because the filling in it was such a big area that I took my brush tip micron pen to color that in. So it was a lot quicker. So the quote reads, stop, stand here, and breathe in all the things that make you grateful for this life. So before I continue on with coloring in the spots that I want colored or going over the lines a bit thicker, I like to erase the pencil lines and I try not to rub too hard because it will erase the ink from the pen. And I try to wait and make sure that the ink is dry before doing it as well because it will smudge the ink and you will want to scream. I have done it many times. And I don't always plan everything out as to what I'm going to do. Sometimes I just do the letters and I kind of let the space determine how the letters are. And if I know there's certain words that I want to emphasize, I may do those first and make those bigger and then make all the other words just fit in. And I do tend to have some go-to lettering that I like to use. Like the breathe in, how half of it is filled with black and then I go in and do the top part with white. That's one of my favorite things to do. And the word here, I like doing that where, I'm not sure how to describe it, but like with the H, the line that's horizontal is down low instead of in the middle and the E I bring down that I don't know what to call it <laughs> that 
I don't know, that bubble part, the circle part of the E, I bring that line down really low. It's hard to explain. <laughs> I'm sure there's better words I could have used to explain it, but they're not coming to my mind right now. But those are some letterings that I tend to go to often. Another one is where I'll make, like say the H, I would make that first stroke, the vertical stroke, a wide line and then everything else small. So there's different letterings and the more you play the more you get used to it. So for the second finished page for Kristen, I decided to do one of my quirky faces. And this one came together like me first doing it. I love um, Deb Weir. I'm not sure how to pronounce her last name. W-E-I-E-R. I love her art. Absolutely love it. And I can't do what she does and I don't want to because it's her thing and to me I don't care who you are nobody can do it like she does it she is an amazing artist and I love just love so much her characters and her painting so I wanted to do something like this was quite a while ago I just wanted to do something that was somewhat in that style but not copy her and so I thought the lines had to be loose and I think that's one of the keys so for me like the first time I ever tried drawing one I wouldn't lift my, lift my pencil I would just do a continuous line drawing and make it very scribbly and sketchy and ill proportion like I didn't want the eyes the same and sometimes I would just do them different sizes sometimes I would do it like completely different shapes and I know you may think it's weird but I love it and just take a look at her Instagram account I'll try to remember to link it below the video but what she does is is beautiful you have to look at her stuff and I don't know if you'll be able to tell by any drawings that I do that it was inspired by hers because hers are amazing but it did spark the inspiration for me doing my little scribbly faces See, and now I just want to go on and on about her artwork. <laughs> but I will shut up now. So anyway, I took the line from the lip and I just continued it out. And like I didn't want to, again, didn't want to lift my pen and just wrote out the words, what do you think? Totally random. I don't know where it came from. It was just... You know, sometimes art will be like that. You just do random stuff and you get away with it. <laughs> so I'm going in with the brush micron and it's just to thicken up some of the lines and emphasize some. And it looks weird right now, but once you go over it again with like different size pens and scribble some more and then add a bit of color, it to me it just all works out. And I'm not one for drawing realistic things. I used to years and years ago. Like I would sit down and try to draw a person or an animal and make it like realistic. And I have the ability to do it. I just have no desire to do that now. Absolutely none. It doesn't bring me joy. It, I just find it annoying to be honest <laughs> I do like it's so time consuming and I don't I'm not one that wants to take that long to do something 
I did, when I was a kid, it didn't bother me. And when you're a kid, you got nothing but time, right? But now I just, I like doing fun things and whimsical things. And I don't want perfection. I don't want things to look super realistic. It's like, I want you to be able to tell what things are and for it to have the basic, you know, comparisons of the real thing and stuff. But no, I want to keep it fun. And I love doing oversized ears. That's one thing I can't seem to get away from. That, Or if there's a different style of face that I drew and I made the ears really tiny and up really high and I like that too. So it's just about, I don't know, I just need to make things different. Then I find it more enjoyable. That's what's fun too. If you draw characters and make it, make it your own. Who cares if anybody else likes it? Just do something that makes you smile, makes you laugh when you draw it. And then it's something you can incorporate into your own artwork and nobody else is going to have it because you drew it. It was your idea, your creation. The most important thing to do when you're I always call it playing because to me I'm having fun I am playing and that is the most important thing have fun otherwise what's the point in doing it if you're gonna be stressed out about whether it not whether or not it's like good enough or perfect or as good as this person or that person does you're gonna be miserable and it took a while for me to learn that too because, and I still have moments where I'm like, oh, I wish I could do what that person does, but just find what it is that you enjoy and play and experiment and just find out what makes you happy and do that. Who cares what everybody else is doing? And what is it everybody is saying? You do you? <laughs> It's true. I may be sick of hearing it, but <laughs> it's true. Just do your own thing and ignore what anybody else has to say about it. Just have fun. So for the coloring of the face, and I know there's moments where this is looking horrible and then it's looking like Frankenstein, <laughs> but it's just all about the layers I find. And I'm using Jane Davenport's watercolor paints. And I like to do just a layer, wait for it to dry, and then go in with some different colors and then wait for that to dry and then go in with more colors. And I usually try to do the lights first and then go in a bit darker in areas and then a bit darker again and just build up the layers and the tone until I'm happy with it. I find with watercolor, it's, I find it hard personally. And I feel the lesson is to go slow and do it in layers and try not to judge it until you're far into it because in the beginning it just it's I personally anyways I don't think it looks good <laughs> like it has so many ugly stages and you think this is not going to end well but if you just be patient with yourself and be patient with the watercolors it it usually does like and it's going to take practice and I mean it may be different for me too because I don't go for realistic or perfectionist like so I don't know that helps I feel like I'm rambling and lecturing <laughs> Am I? Am I being annoying? 
Oh my goodness. I wish you guys could like say, okay, Denise, um, we get it. Shut up. But you know, do it nicely. Don't be mean. <laughs> I'm sensitive. So anyways, that's the thing when there's not a lot to explain in the video, then I start talking and I'm telling you, once you get to know me, like I'm shy in the beginning, but then when you get to know me, it's like, yeah, I can be quite talkative. See, and now I'm trying not to be, and I have nothing to say. <laughs> I've made myself paranoid that I'm getting on your nerves. <coughs> and I've also made my throat dry. See, that's a sign I'm talking too much. So this is it. This page is it for the two completed pages that I sent to Kristen. And I want you to stay after this is over because I will have a couple pictures of the two finished pages and I will also be including a clip of when I looked at Kristen's two finished pages to me. So you'll get my reaction when I looked at them. And then I also, I'm going to show the, um, remember she sent a little brand box and it had some goodies in it. I showed you most of it, but I forgot to show, it was like little sequence and stuff in the bottom of the box and somebody had asked in one of the comments for me to show it so I will show that at the end as well so stick around even after I show the two pictures because there is more to follow so after this I think we have two more weeks left and that will be us finishing the pages that were sent to us. So it'll be process videos of us doing that. So that is it for my two pages to Kristen. And like I said, stick around and you'll see a little sneak peek of Kristen's two pages and then you can head to her channel to watch her process. Hi everybody, so in my previous videos you have seen, you saw me open this and get my reaction to all the pages, but you haven't seen and I haven't even seen yet the two completed pages. So what I'm going to do now is show the two completed pages. So I haven't even seen, except for Kristen's video, is the only time I saw the bottom of this box because I didn't even remove the last two pages because I was afraid that I would see something I shouldn't. So that's the pages I've already looked at. And now these are the completed pages that I haven't looked at yet. bottom of the box. So pretty. Oh, and I'll try to remember somebody asked to see all the little bits that Kristen put in this one. So I'll also record showing that. I was way too excited in the first video that I forgot to go through all that. So the two completed ones. I just love her doodles. Okay, I want to do one at a time. I saw some bright colors. <laughs> oh, she does really nice eyes. I'm going to make sure I'm in camera. I love that eye. Oh, there's a mouth and the nose. Oh, I 
I love that. That is beautiful. That is absolutely beautiful. Ooh. Gave me an idea for a page. Eee. It says, will you help me finish the story? She's always so clever with her wording. I love that. Sorry, I can't stop staring at it. <laughs> Move on. But look how nice that eye is. Love that. I just think it's so clever too, how you can see a little trace of the nose and mouth. Love it. Okay. See you in the next one. Look at all the bright colors. I love, um, I was going to say Wizard of Oz, Alice in Wonderland, and the rabbits in there. <laughs> Done. <laughs> so clever. <laughs> that's pretty, I like that. I wonder if that's the actual paper or she doodled on it. That's pretty. I like it. Oh, the glitter. Can you imagine if you took the deco, deco color marker, went over the whole page? Oh my goodness. I know you used paint, Kristen, but that would be crazy. So pretty. There's my two completed pages. And I'm happy. This one, no whether or not I can do it, but this one sparked an idea. And I think I want to tie in, like I want it, I want whatever I do to tie in with the style that she started. So I think I will try and use some papers as well. Don't have any fun images though, not that I can think of. But I'm going to have a look and see. Thank you, Kristen. I'm so glad we did this. Thank you so much again for asking me to do this with you. Okay. So now for the goodies that she sent me inside this box that I forgot to show in the first video. She got this cute little bag. And it is full of... these little rhinestones. And of course they're all flipped over the wrong way. I'm trying to get them flipped over for you. Ooh, black one. See? So that one's in the bag. And I know I showed oh, losing them. Darn it. I know I showed these because I remember thinking how cool they were. Like it's fabric. These are totally cool. I love this one. The really flimsy one. I love that one. Oh, it's so pretty in the Makes me think of mermaids. <laughs> Ooh, that should be nice. Look. Oh, I like it with that one, with the black. No, I showed that. I think it was just mostly like the sequins. A little sequins that somebody wanted to see. So, what it is, there's a bunch of cut out like punch circles and then some stars and put it against the black. Oops. 
missing. Oh, I think that's harder to see. You can see the stars. So that's what's in the bottom. A whole bunch of stars and circles. So there we go. I'll flip through these again too, since I flipped through everything else. I know I showed it in the first video, but I just love whatever this paper is. Are white. Oh, this one too. I'm so afraid that whatever I decide to do, I'm going to end up messing it up and then I'm not going to see like my favorite parts of it. That would be very sad. I love that stencil she uses too. This one's pretty as well. I love this color. So that is all the stuff. So now I'm going to play and do some pages. Bye. Oh, that remind me of Kristen. <laughs> You're rubbing off on me, Kristen, doing your little fingers, or do you do it like that? Or do you go like this? I think you go like this. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. I can't talk to you anymore, Kristen. <laughs> Bye.